should be okay for the most part. Um, this should be a pretty low resource stream. Because it shouldn't require many resources on my end. I'm just playing in, like, uh, roll 20 right now. But so, hello everyone. Uh, so, been offline for the past few days due to many various reasons, but, uh, I'm back. And tonight I am going to be, uh, playing some D&D &D with a couple of my friends, um... So as you can see in the top right, we've got a list of our names. There's a lot of Nicks. There's me. Um, we've also got a Nicole. That's also pretty fun. Um, but anyways, we're going to be playing through um, the uh, Invasion from the Planet of Tarasks D&D campaign. And it's going to be a fun one. It's a level 20 campaign, max level. And we're just going to have a good time. As you can see, you can see one of my sheets right now. It's not actually very descriptive, uh, mostly because we're like primarily focused on the combat, not necessarily the role playing for this session, since it's sort of like a one shot. Although maybe we might take it further than that. I don't know. Um, and so, anyways, let's jump right back in with the uh, with the lads and then see what they're saying. Also, no no face cam again for this stream, um, mostly because actually I tried to turn on my face cam for some reason it doesn't want to work it's my computer's not detecting it right now or it is detecting it but it doesn't want to turn it on and uh that's just generally upsetting um oh wait nope i can get it working now that's great awesome um so you know something maybe i will use my face cam for this i'll put it right um i'll put it right below the uh the other stuff um i just gotta rearrange this Uh, get this down here. And there we go. I think that's that's a decent-ish layout. And I should hopefully still be able to showcase things. So I'm going to try to play some, like, atmospheric music and whatnot um, via tabletop audio, since that is a uh, very nice, um, a nice quality service that people provide online for free. Um... Otherwise, let's just hop in and see what everyone else is saying. You, before Dylan left, since one time they just decided they want to be knights. So at the beginning, I was thinking, focus more like them moving up through ranks and conflicts with other nobles and all that stuff. This doesn't Never... seem like the kind of party for intrigue. That's the only That's thing. I'm like, I'm, I'm, uh... I've been straying away from trying to... I don't want to say trying to put players in positions of power. If they want the positions of power, feel free. But also, they will lose the position of power <laughs> if they realize for a second uh, that, wow, I, I can't also go adventure? I have to govern the kingdom? Yeah, you stole this baby. You have to raise the baby now. You know, because the baby's the kingdom. I was going to solve that issue by simply having other advisors. I assure you, the oh. I I solved that issue in a couple of Exalted games where I was a... Uh, I, I say where I was a player, I've never run Exalted before. Um, but in uh, a couple of games, uh, especially since I knew, uh, at the time, boyfriend wanted to be a king. I did, like, the Jafar Vizier sort of situation. Um, so anytime we had a stable kingdom, it's because I did all of the stuff, right, in the background. Um, yeah. He felt a great betrayal when he realized that the entire military was working for me because I paid them and gave them food? Wacky, I know. Um, so, uh, I really uh, like going behind people's backs to do intrigue like that but here we are it's not a game yeah. that i always that i tend to end up in i see with mine the uh... so basically the castle that i ended up getting was being held by like the council at 
like all the other dukes as a whole, since there wasn't an actual king. When they asked for that as when they asked for that as a reward for something, and so the duke that gave it to them made it a condition that they take on this specific castellan because he knows what he's doing. As gonna have made it so if they want to move up the ranks, can never become king because Waterdeep doesn't have a king, but it could. All right, so. I understand they're talking about some pretty interesting stuff right now, but it doesn't necessarily have to do directly with the campaign. So, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take this time to try and, first of all, turn down that music. I want to, like, tune the audio and stuff. But also, uh, still have some ambiance, but I don't want it to be overpowering. But then also, I want to uh, take the time to actually get our characters' names, since they currently are, um... Paladino, basically everyone's running two characters tonight, um, and I've got Paladino, Fishbro, and Watermech, Druid Boy. Basically my whole thing is, um, I've got the, uh, a level 20 Druid, he's gonna be transforming into elementals and whatnot, um, but on the side of that I've got a Paladin who is a, uh, a Triton, and the Triton is just gonna ride inside of the golems and shoot people with arrows, and so that's gonna be fun. Um... But so, we need names for them, so let's get them fantasy names. I'm, I like to use uh, fantasy name generators because it's a pretty decent website. So, if we look for... Are there, like, Triton names on this? Although, actually, hang on, I'll do it over here. Here we go, that way everyone in the stream can see it. But so, what I can do is I can look along and I'm thinking, are Tritons actually here? No. Okay, so then let's use like merfolk names. Is merfolk here? Mermaid slash merman names? Sure. So this is going to be for our, uh, basically I've got my, he's a warlock paladin. And so let's get him a name real quick. Uh, let's, I'm just going to go until I see some that look pretty decent. We got Dennis, but with a Z, so it's Dennis. Uh, Storm, Marshall, Poseidon. Uh, nothing really good, to be honest. We got two of the same name here. That's great. Uh, you know, I quite like Caspian, actually. So we'll, we'll name him Caspian. So we can just come here. And say Caspian. And then afterwards, we want to get ourselves, like, technically he's kind of like a werewolf sort of character. Like, basically he's a shifter for, um, for the druid. So he's like half werewolf, so we'll just get him like a werewolf name. Uh. Oh wait, actually, hang on, I think I saw a good one... But I skipped over it. You know something? I I'm gonna name him Lupus. Because it's never gonna be Lupus, you know? For those who are fans of uh Doctor House MD, like I am. Uh but so let's see if everyone's uh all set and everything's working out. Why the hell is someone rolling a hundred D one hundreds, jeez. Um, but anyways typically operate and everything. So later if you guys came back to the same area and it made sense for him to be involved in what was whatever was going on to bring him back. We also still have to finish up um, spells and whatnot I think because the, uh, the sheet um, sometimes the only lags time I really out got when you load it annoyed was uh, with, with the Zaydi not it. The sheet sometimes can end up lo lagging out quite a bit when you attempt to load it with all the spells built in. At least this specific character sheet does. So I refrained from putting them in until just now. Um, but you know something actually, I'll just go over real quick what we've got. So I've got um, basically every character starts at level 20. We are allowed to have 5 magic items. 
um, up to a very rare quality, and then one legendary item. I still haven't actually figured out my legendary item, so I'm going to try and get the DM's attention to talk about that. But otherwise, I am... Um, so here I've got my paladin. Um, and so he's got some warlock spells, some paladin spells, so we can take a look at uh, that. Um, now, unfortunately... I'm not allowed to display all the spells on the screen because of, uh, you know, certain legal problems. But what I can do is I can kind of talk about them. Um, so I think we should focus on the Warlock first since they're like one and done style. Like, this is the spell that I'm going to take. Um, and one of the spells that I'm going to take right away is um, since my character is a Hexblade Warlock, he can get the shield spell, so I'm immediately going to give myself the shield spell. So, let me do that if this thing is going to work. It seems like it's a little frozen up, that's okay. So we can go spells, import from all sources, um, and then we can say... I didn't mean to type in the word spell, it's still lagging a teeny bit as it's loading these, since I just installed this, uh, this plugin for the first time. Um, but so, we're gonna get the shield spell right away. Um, I already have cantrips and everything sorted, cantrips being, like, your unlimited use spells. Um... And so now all we've got to do is we've got two spells that are 6th and then 7th level. And then we have the remaining 11 spells because the other two spells don't count against our spells known. Um, but we have a 6th level and a 7th level spell that we can cast once a day for free. I also want to turn off flocks it keeps getting in the way of me being able to identify color um and so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually thinking the soul cage spell is a pretty interesting one although i'm not the most concerned about it um Huh. Creature tries to use teleportation. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, you know something? I'm gonna get myself Finger of Death. That's a really high- that's a really nice high-level spell. Um, again, thing is lagging for some reason. I do not quite understand why my bitrate is the same as it was before. Um, so Finger of Death is gonna be our seventh level spell. And then we need our 6th level spell, and I was thinking maybe Flesh to Stone could be a good one. Um, just because, uh, basically we're gonna be fighting what are known as Tarasks. They're, like, massive, like, primordial, like, immortal dinosaur kind of monsters. And, you know something? Having one of those guys as a, uh, as, like, a statue, kind of interesting. I would love to have that. So let's get Flesh to Stone. Um, as unlikely as it is that it fails all of its saving throws as required by the spell, I'm taking that. Um, I think I want the Cone of Cold spell as, um, one of our other 11 spells. Then we've got a few other ones. So, like, Armor of Agathis is a good one. Um, there is the Misty Step spell. That's a good one. I'm going to get that one as well. And so basically I'm like queuing them up to all import so that way I can put them into my sheet. Um, what else is here? I think Mind Spike could be useful.
Yeah, Mind Spike could be useful, but I don't think it's uh, going to be the most worth it. Um, maybe Elemental Bane could be a good one. Elemental Bane, basically all that spell does is it, um, it makes it so that way every, every like, the first time every, each turn that a creature, uh, takes a certain damage type, it will, uh, take a little bit extra, and it loses resistance to it as well, if it has any. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be too helpful for us, since, um, for the most part, the monsters will have, uh, like, immunity to damage types. Um, I think Banishment could be a good one. Banishment's a fourth level spell, and so we can take that, and, um, in essence, uh, good thing about having that is if we wanted to, we could try to remove one of them from the fight completely. Um... And then we can also, uh, we can also get Banishing Smite as well as, uh, a Hexblade Warlock. So I think that's a good one to have, just because we can buff up our weapon attacks. That's the whole point. Um, I'm going to see what the other guys are up to right now. Hey, we could all, when we make our own characters, we could all just be computer programs. They can it never could. catch us. Although it becomes a thing where if you're all computer programs, we might as well just code it so that everybody's regular. Um, and this entire game's taking place on a server somewhere, I guess. Um, alternatively, it could just be the fun thing of several, basically several programs trying to hunt down uh, a, a person at meat space, you know? Just checking through cameras. There he is. Okay. <laughs> Get your dumb robot to shoot him. Oh, another idea. One player that has a physical body who's a robot and what are all the voices in his head? His That's... alternate personalities. Oh, yeah. So, you guys do already have voices in your head. Even if you are <laughs> just an infomorph. Uh, you, everybody has a thing called a muse that's put in at a very young age that is basically Siri on Hypercope. <laughs> uh, they translate languages for you. Sometimes they're therapists. They have a different set of skills that you're like, if you're, you know, you're some mercenary, you aren't necessarily the best accountant, but you got a muse for that, right? Um, and you can just be like, hey, muse, shut up. Or the muse could just be talking in your voice, so if you register it as you basically thinking. But I mean, the, the muse is with you so long that it might as well be, right? Yeah, that's one thing I like about Fall Escape, the few episodes that I've seen of it. They like to take on all the stuff that shouldn't make sense in sci-fi, like Universal Chance titles being able to instantly work. So in the very first episode, main guy is in a jail cell after being transported to a ship. I think it's like for modern day, if I remember right. I think it but, translates text immediately, but on uh, vocal stuff, it takes a second. Not yeah. a second, but it takes some time. Yeah, but in Fall Escape, the jailer realizes he can't understand. Little robot comes in, stabs him in an anchor, and then leaves. Then the guy explained. That injected nanobots that go to the brain stem, and uh, and they're programmed with all the languages, so they'll actively translate so he knows what they mean. So everybody's still speaking, basically everybody in the ship speaking in a different language, but because of that they can all understand each other. I'm pretty but, sure that's how it is. Let me let me check real quick on the like, Acromoki team. Who do we yeah, have but, here? The uh, thing that's diff different, thing that's different from that and like Star Trek or something like that, 
in Fallscape, the bugs actually have to be programmed with the language already. There's no contacting a new alien ace and instantly understanding them. You have to figure out the language and then update all the translation bugs. So the team leader in this group is Kai? So basically all I'm going to be doing currently, so sorry if I'm not talking too much, but I'm going to be, uh... They're, they're talking about, like, um, some other campaign-related stuff, not this campaign, but I'm going to be, uh, just selecting a few more spells, finish up the Paladin Warlock spell selection, and then I am going to jump into, uh, getting my, uh into getting my other character ready, who is the druid. He's gonna have a bunch of spells. Quite a few of them, I think it's gonna be like 26 spells, so that might take me a hot minute. And so I might not talk throughout that, because I don't wanna like, have my voice overlapping with theirs, but I also don't want you guys to, uh, like, you know, have no kind of interaction between people. And for some reason, oh, I, because I minimized Discord, that disappeared. I don't like that. That's the way it does it still. Um, but you know, I gotta I gotta work around that, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm like also trying to look up the uh, the legendary item that I want, and I was thinking one of two things: either an Ion Stone, which is like this magical rock that just floats around your head and gives you a passive bonus, or a um, a Horn of Valhalla. You know something? Maybe the Horn of Valhalla might not actually be a good one to have. Just because it'll let us summon a bunch of allies that will uh, fight with us if we need them. Although it's only once every seven days, so maybe not the most useful. So I'm guessing the Ion Stone would probably be the better choice. So yeah, you know something? I'm thinking we go for... Although actually, one of the things that I was thinking about was getting, or at least asking for one of the dragon masks. The, they're from a different campaign, but they are legendary items. And I was talking with the DM about it, and the thing about having one of those masks would actually mean that there's a primordial goddess that's about to be reborn. So we would have to contend with that and that would be a fun time um i also need to set my name here to let's say i'll just set it to the same as like it is in discord almost but um i still have a few more spells i'm just gonna like let you guys listen to them kind of go on because they love to go on tangents it's really entertaining just listening to these guys sometimes that's what that's personally why I love hanging out with them, but so, let's just jump back in. Um, everyone's like illegal beta forks of this person, who's just a little bit messed up in uh, one way or another, so it's not necessarily... All of the, the copies aren't the same person. Yeah. Um, they're just like, okay, this person needed to go do some diplomacy. Here, just copy, you know, the diplomatic part of me, and then go do this or whatever, right? Uh, so, uh, in that one, uh, it's in order. Uh, if there's four people, only the four first four uh, characters are available. And then as you add people, you can add more of them. Um, but, like, if you only have one person, for whatever reason, the first person is the only character available. Oh. All right. it goes down like that. I am terribly sorry to interrupt this awesome conversation, but I did just have a quick question. So, okay. I still need to actually make a definitive decision on my legendary item. I was okay. curious, could I actually have one of the dragon masks? Not the dragon queen mask, but like, one of the part masks, you know? I was thinking like, uh... Maybe I'd get the black dragon mask, because, you know, I like the, um... I like having it where... I've got acid resistance. I don't quite know why I like it if I would have acid resistance. It just seems like a good thing to have, you know? 
theoretically acid resistance could come up. I mean, if I get eaten by a terrorist, yeah. it would. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> I guess in that case, acid resistance could go down. In that case, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Okay, I'll take that one then. Thanks. <laughs> Give me a link. I haven't actually read the Dragon Mask, so I. Don't oh yeah, know. so basically, I can give you the link to it, um, real quick. I'll just throw this in Discord, but basically, what it does is it gives you a couple properties. It gives you resistance to acid damage. If you already had resistance, you get immunity, and if you already had immunity, you regain health when um equal to half the damage you take. If you're not wearing armor, which in the case of my characters for right now, that's not going to be the case, but maybe in the future if I pass it along to one that's not dead, um, uh, then I get to add my charisma bonus to AC. If I have a breath weapon, neither of these characters have a breath weapon, um, then it gains a recharge of 6. It gives dark vision, and um, once per day I can give myself blind sight for 30 feet, um, out to 30 feet for 5 minutes. I can speak Draconic while wearing it, and then I get a once-a-day legendary resistance to succeed on a saving throw. It's either this or an Ion Stone, and I think the Ion Stone would be simpler, but I was, like, thinking, if I could get this, then that would be awesome. Not to mention, it does kind of confirm that Tiamat is going to be somewhere and that could lead to other shenanigans after we're done with this whole one shot you know yeah. ion stones can die that's why yeah I that's the other thing why that's why i was die. worried about it <laughs> well i can honestly tell you i've never targeted an ion stone yeah yep but uh yeah sure yeah all right so you're fine with the uh you're fine with the mask yeah it's fine Awesome. All right, I will add it into my sheet as soon as I finish adding all the fucking spells. But sorry, continue. You guys were talking about um, Shadowrun and everything. Uh, clip space. Oh, clip space. Sorry. Yeah. Which, by the way, it's been uh, difficult trying to find pictures for Eclipse phase. That aren't Shadowrun, um, and uh, vice versa, like putting them into two different categories, picture-wise. Oh yeah. Also, um, you get a hundred and fifty d a hundred gold per character. Mm. I don't know if you're there when that was mentioned. I may have been here, but I might have been introducing my stream, so I was just like. Uh, I was kind of, like, uh, muted so that way, you know, sound wouldn't overlap too much. That's a lot of gold. Wait, so 150 or 100? 150. 150, okay. I just saw the other guys rolling one 100 only, so that's why I was... Yeah, you gave me 5e e links on, uh, your items. <laughs> nice. And right. ultimately, the gold doesn't matter that much. No, it's just... But here we are. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that in, like, my character planning sheet, because I'm assuming it's, like, for all of my characters? Or is no. that for each character? Oh. For each character. Oh, alright, so I'll just roll this again a few times. So I've got... That's a lot of gold. I'd love to see where the hell they're putting uh... all of it. Well... Bags of holding, presumably. Ah, uh, yeah. Or right. I guess a bank. <laughs> I guess you guys are in a city, and there is a bank. No, I just carry it raw coins like in my pockets. Sure. It's 167 pounds of gold. You could have it in platinum. Ah, uh, who wants fucking plat? You're level 20 characters. Be bougie. You know that's true. I'll just yeah, take I this. For my characters, actually, we chose the the king of his kingdom. Just inherited the title from his father. 
Well, this is the second-hand man that keeps the other nobles from conspiring. Well, they conspire against the king, but then they don't live very long. I think Four. we are, for the most part, ready. Yeah. Okay. Already read uh, the beginning, uh, the explanation, you know, the, the deep lore of a wizard's board, so this is happening now. Um, but, let's see here. Uh, you guys are all, presumably all six of your characters, are enjoying some downtime at the Yawning Portal when a sudden shriek piercing the tavern's revelry uh, happens as 47-foot-tall hippopotamus-headed humanoids armed with muskets, pistols, grenades, and swords climb over the side that well, the well that leads to the Undermountain. Hmm. I could post a picture, but do you guys, do you guys know what a, what a gif looks like? Not a gif. A gif. A gif? Yes. I know what gifs look like. They're just the, like, green ogre elves, right? Nope, this one. Gif. Different. G-I-F-F. -F, as opposed no. to G-I-T-H. This is a oh. gif. You see 40 of those. Um, <laughs> except they're armed to the teeth. Do they look friendly? There we go. Here's They've the picture from the book. They've got guns, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, the, the gif in the front raises her hands in a sign of peace uh, to silence the crowd um, as she speaks up I am Lieutenant Dora Beth Rumpington leader of the Smoke Eaters <laughs> <laughs> the fi uh, 525th gif paloon uh, I would like to see the most accomplished warriors in the tavern a lot of people start looking at you guys. Before so, they even look good, Shot instantly jumps up. And yeah, so over. would Caspian, who is my uh, my Triton. <laughs> Velus is following, but a bit more reluctantly. <laughs> Bonesa and the Knight are immediately like running over. They finally have something to do. <laughs> we should just walking over in a much more dignified fashion. Velus is just, uh, just looking only like what Gratty bail him out of this time uh physically there's about no difference between a male and a female gif i've posted two pictures you could guess which one is which what's up uh, male? that's a good question i don't know <laughs> but uh uh she sits down <laughs> um and uh puts her big chonky hands uh, in the air to, to order a, a round of drinks for everybody. Notably, she orders a water for herself. Um, and also, I just looked at the picture for that gif on the bottom again, and I don't know why I'm so uncomfortable that they have human hands. Isn't it so <laughs> bad? <laughs> like, the top one has three I don't know, fingers. It's three fingers, and that's almost whatever. Like, hang on. I want to. I want to see if I can display this on the stream real quick because I need to get another. I need to get another capture for it. But that uh, that bottom picture, the actual picture in the book, boy oh boy, those weird, regular hands. <laughs> like, I just want to stress this part. Yeah, like, look at this shit. Hang on. I gotta. I gotta crop this as well. That's some creepy stuff. Uh, but yes, she orders everybody drinks. You can have whatever drink is appropriate for your character. She orders water. The other 30-something-odd uh, gif don't have their weapons. or they, they start putting their weapons away, but it's not so much that they aren't like they're, they're tucked 
and the bullets aren't in guns, they just aren't holding them up anymore. Um, yeah, they were not threatening. Yes. Um, but she tells you the story of her platoon. Uh, we, the Smoke Eaters, she points to everybody, the other big tubby hippo people with her. Um, by the way, the picture on the bottom is Dora Beth. Uh, she points to all of the smoke eaters with her. We arrived in the Undermountain by way of the Star Duck, or Star Dock. Uh, we parked our ship, the Curly Tusk, on the asteroid and brokered passage into the other, into the other Undermountain with the Gith Yankee. Uh, we came to Waterdeep because we're looking to seek a mercenary defense contract with this city. Uh, she lets it hang in the air for a moment. Yeah. You're getting a contract to defend the city, or do you need people from the city to come fight for you? To defend the city. The city is about to be attacked by creatures of enormous size, quite similar to the legendary Tarasque, though legally different for reasons. I... Understandable. Uh, between our contracts, we, we like to hunt powerful monsters. We decided to take a holiday and hunt a monster uh, in the material plane world of Falks, a, a planet filled with Tarasque like creatures. Some sages even say that the Jurassic of legend comes from this planet. And one of our scouts, uh, Private Condobol, Condobol Duff, uh, tracking one of these enormous monstrosities, returned mortally wounded to the Curly Tusk. And just before he died, Condobol told, or told me that he had stumbled upon a spiral tower that had a large pyre of purple flame at its top. Many of the monstrosities gathered around the tower, simply staring at the fire. Curious... He had climbed to the top of the tower where he saw a human wizard named Halister Blackcloak. The mage rambled about using the terrace to destroy the City of Splendors as revenge against adventurers who wronged him. Uh, the mage had muttered something about opening a portal in the, ca in the castle ward. Uh, he mentioned that the planned date for the opening of the portal would be today, and there's little time to prepare. Uh... Condable asked what the adventurers had done to, or done to him, but the question seemed to enrage the wizard who burned uh, our scout with magical fire. Uh, he fled, and the insane mage did not care to follow, um, and our that private died after sharing that story with me. I think that, I believe that Waterdeep is in terrible danger, and I think you guys could use the Smoke Eater's aid. I just ask that you introduce me post haste to the city's leader so I can arrange a contract uh, also uh, we may sure. not be enough for the defense of the city but I imagine you need all you need all hands on mech here being level 20 characters you know who the leader of the city is uh, his name is L'Oreal Layroll Le Le Silverhand uh, the open lord of Waterdeep um, it would not be a problem for you guys to get yeah. this meeting arranged. Yeah, you should just stand up, just for the phone and say, Come on, I'll show you to Lily. <laughs> <laughs> now, I should mention this, although this will be mentioned presumably during or after the meeting. But as people who theoretically would have done business a lot in the city, you know that there are, are a lot of... Uh, other organizations in the city that you could be asking for help uh, in addition to the, uh, the the leader of the city. You have the Force Grey and the Grey Hands. Uh, you have the Emerald Enclave, the Harpers, Lord's Alliance, the Order of the Gauntlet, and the Zen Zentarim? Zentarim? Zentarim. Uh, uh, you have criminal factions uh, such as the I'm not going to try it noble family. Manchun Centrum, the Shard Shunners, or the Xanthar Guild. Uh, you guys would also know of a gold dragon who's hanging out in uh, under the city, who I guess could help. But um, uh, only issue. Yeah. 
only issue with this is I put nothing into Charisma. Yeah. Oh, that's why I got really Maladino, good. bro. Well, we're we're back on the the whole uh, good time alternative stat breaks downs, right? Uh, if you could try to convince me otherwise, uh, the things oh, yeah. are still going to be the charisma skills, your intimidate, deception, persuasion, performance. Sure, but you can use whatever stat if you can convince me how you're using it. Sure. Uh, but yeah, you guys would know that there are other people you could ask. Alternatively, everybody could go meet the with the leader of the city. Well, King Richards obviously showing them to the leader of the city. Mm -hmm. Well, would probably go to some of the people in the underground. I still imagine him being one of the shady assaults. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to think of how I could apply wisdom or maybe dex to one of these checks. Does anybody else have any ideas on other factions they would like to go to? I don't actually have descriptions of the other factions. Is well, there anybody is... going to the dragon? Well, Nobody does is... A... Go ahead. So see, does, Brenda, does your mask help you with dragons? Um, yeah, it is supposed to help me with dragons, but only black dragons, unfortunately. Oh. So it's not going to help us a... with a good dragon. There's a gold dragon specifically. Yeah. Um, I would think, though, potentially both my characters might have a tie to the, uh, the Emerald Enclave, which are, like, nature dudes. And I'd try mm -hmm. to go, like, talk with them. Okay. Um, I will tell you, with the negotiations on all of these factions, only one character's like per faction is going to be able to roll. All right. Uh, so if uh, you send yeah. both, it's still only one check. Yeah, That's so fair. send one of your somewhere else. Uh, since All time right. is of the essence, uh, people going to go meet, uh, dealing with the leader of the city is going to be going to make things easier depending on how it goes, or harder depending on how it goes. Um, but, uh, everybody could, if they wait till after talking to the leader, you only get one faction that you can go check. You only have time for one. Um, but if people split up now, they have time for two. Yeah, my characters is to be splitting up. Yeah, my characters would split up as well, and I would, um, I would send... I think, uh, the druid would definitely go to the Emerald Enclave, and then the paladin... I don't know, there might be, like, some some bar brawlers guild or something would there also be a more religious faction i wish i knew what these factions were i think that would be <laughs> like the order of the gauntlet the order of the gauntlet's like heavily religious and uh they are very devoted to uh, like keeping peace in the world and whatnot and punching shit yeah they are also very zealous <laughs> Although that, like, again, only if we're in the Forgotten Realms do these factions exist. Which I'm assuming are we are. The we're in Waterdeep, so I'm assuming. Yeah. Here's the list of legitimate factions. Um, here is the list of uh, crimes. Um... Oh, the Xanathar Guild. Let's go ask the big Beholder for help. Beholder friend. Uh, yeah, who wants to go talk with a great with a great old one? This is a the leader of a uh, Drow mercenary company who's currently in the city, uh, and this is oh. the name of the dragon. Could Velas have some history with that mercenary company? Sure. This, those are definitely the type of people he would have hired and needed some extra help. Makes sense. Let's go with the uh, meeting with uh, Lariel. Who is going with the GIF and King should, Richard? Should just be Richard. Just to okay. else can split up. Uh, in that case, we'll start with there. Um, yeah. When... My character will just walk in to see see the king. If any, any servants or helps anybody tries to stop him, he's not slowing down. 
uh, there's uh, a, a busybody who you know is new. Um, who's like, sir, 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 you can't go! And somebody else, like, sort of stops them. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, if you actually sit in front of me, you should have just got the entire head in one hand and thrown them to the side. Uh, now, I should just... mention, you should be over seven feet tall. Big lion guy. Ah. Uh, Silverhand, uh, you presumably bust into the door, uh, and he's looking at some papers and drinking tea politely. Um, the, uh, uh, one of the other servants, uh, who saw you come in, uh, has, uh, like, just runs up behind you and is like, not the one that uh, was trying to stop you before, but the one who stopped them, um, and uh, just sort of, you know, averts gaze and says, um, King Richard, could I request that this meeting take place in the meeting room? If you hoy. Let me, let me, let me show you to the meeting room. <laughs> Even though, like, Silverhand is there, he sort of rolls his eyes. Uh, because he knows this is about to be an unavoidable meeting. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that thing where a lion and as... a hippo storm into a building. <laughs> the lion is as... a king and the hippo is armed to the fucking teeth. <laughs> yeah, as a... Steampunk, like, armor <laughs> set up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, as they turn to walk away, I, I just turn and call back over her shoulder. Oh, yeah, Bluey, your, your city is about to be destroyed. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure the GIF have ships. Some of their ships don't run on magic. Like, they might have regular space travel. <laughs> like the, they have regular spaceships that use electricity and everything else is steampunk. <laughs> Uh, magic. I, re I already want to make King Richard, that's just a normal character in another game. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Dora, once you guys get into the uh, uh, meeting room, uh, Lariel has a, a small escort of about 20 guards. They're there mostly for appearances. You're pretty sure you could kill all of the guards. This is just normal for a meeting, right? Uh, especially since a lot guards, of... Though? Well, yeah, I'm I just look... saying, it's not a matter of... This isn't trying to insult you, is the point. Yeah. The mm. guards are almost always there. Um, yeah. But also, look... there are several armed hippos now outside of the building. Yeah. So here we I'd are. look at the guards the same way I'd look at the little kid with a wooden stick. Hmm. And that's just how the guards, that's how Louis... Oh, it should look sick, anyone that has a weapon. Norbeth tells Lariel the same story that she shared with you, um, and then demands that he pay the gift 25,000 gold to lead the defense of the city against the Tarras. Lariel arches an incredulous eyebrow and turns to you, uh, asking for your opinion. <laughs> As I'll say, I, I think you should do nothing. I don't like these lands. I like to add them to my kingdom. If what she's saying is correct, there isn't going to be any lands to add. But do you think that she's telling the truth here? Uh, well, if she, if she, slang. That'll be proven in a few hours when the creatures don't attack. And then I'll deal with her for you. For a small fee. It seems like everybody is uh, keen on extortion today. Um, he I, furrows his brow. I, I lean in, trying to use, like, flexing a bit, making it very clear how big I am. Mm -hmm. and just say, Oh, trust me, Louis. If I wanted you, if I wanted to extort you, 
I'd have your gold. This allows you to protect your kingdom at a small cost considering what's coming. I suggest you take it. He the doesn't look pleased, but give me an intimidation. <laughs> Can I use strength for it, given my lenient flexing and all that? Sure. Pull up that character sheet since Vos doesn't have any strength. He is so powerful. <laughs> Look at this so big it's... lion boy. Okay, He's, so <laughs> He's so big! He's so big! It helps me have 29 strength. You're proficient in it? You mentioned the... Uh, you mentioned that the charisma stuff would be important early on. I didn't think any other skills would be important. So that's what most of my proficiency is on. Fair. Um... Let's see here. Looking through, there's a points list with him on the negotiation. Uh, a high enough check that it's not leave the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> How do I apply expertise to one of them? Because one of the class features is expertise. Persuasion. Um, you click it again, it'll turn bright yellow. Yeah. There's no way to apply the bard thing, I don't think I can see. But that's okay. None of us are bards. One of my backups is a bard, but I haven't actually made the full character sheet for him yet, because... That's just too much work. I'd rather stick with the monk as my backup. Oh, yeah. That's enough for that one. Okay. Um... He he doesn't roll his eyes. He it does have uh, a concerned look on his face, but um, he says, I don't wish to hire anybody. Um, I'm not sure that this uh, threat is real, but in case it is, I will make sure to increase the security for the time being by putting every member of the city watch, the city guard, and the watchful order of magists on, and protectors on call. Just in case this is real. But um, I have no interest in hiring unproven or unproven mercenaries. I have an idea. Since he seem to be hooked up hooked on whether or not this is you don't do the hippo would you be willing to make the payment conditional on the tasks actually showing up if they show up you fight and get paid if they don't show up he owes you nothing she wants a persuasion she's willing to do half now but She's not willing to stay here unpaid. She's not willing to risk her life and then get paid after the fact. Because uh. there's nothing, after they already saved the city, there's nothing to convince you guys to pay them. And once they're here, nobody's going to be looking uh, through through their wallets. Unfortunately, I'm not good at persuasion. Well. Yeah. I see a problem with that. Hmm. For 13, she's willing to uh, agree to just 20,000 instead of 25. Uh, 
Laria looks very done with this conversation. Not indignant level done, just, you know, he's not amused with this conversation. And he is, though he is having uh, people put on guard. If there's nothing else to be done here, I believe this meeting is over. I just turned to you, the hippo. What do you say about me just joining your company? Don't really want to be in this city once it's leveled. How how tall are you? I I think I figure the maximum height for my character or my race to be like six, seven and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Which I just wanted to be the maximum height for my race. Hmm. You're you're a little skinny, but um, maybe. You have a decent head on your shoulders, but we are a platoon, and I don't know uh, if you have any interest in taking orders. Oh, I just shrug. Point, point me at something to kill and let me go. Yeah. I'm pretty fighting for that. That's a good spirit. Everybody else, where do you guys want to go? Um, well, so my druid would definitely be heading to the Umrild Enclave just to see if he could convince them to help, and I guess he'd try to get one of, uh, Hippopotamus boys to come follow him. Okay. Uh, one of the people come to, uh, yeah. explain the whole situation again. Uh, you, uh, go to the Emerald Enclave. Are you a member? Um, yeah, I think he'd probably be a member. He'd probably be, like, one of the higher standing members. Okay. Uh, you would be meeting with, uh, Jareth Falcon. Uh, who manifests as a female voice that can be heard by anyone in the gardens of Falconomir in the southern ward. So, just an ambiguous voice. The hippo seems a little bit put off um, when when it happens. Uh, but, uh, let me check here. Uh, they eventually go over the whole story uh, talking to just just kind of air until she makes like a like a small wisp so the hippo feels more comfortable looking at something um uh but yes uh she basically asks the same thing do you believe this story and its urgency well given uh given these creatures sudden arrival and also that um, just something hasn't uh, something quite hasn't felt right to me uh, in the trees le recently. I I feel inclined to uh, to accept it for what it is. Give me a persuasion. It's right. a much lower check because you're part of this faction. Okay. So this character is not proficient. Um, but you know something? I can't really actually come up with a reason for why it would be a different stat, so I'm just going to be using my standard well, charisma. Well, you got, you know, you were feeling something in the trees. You can use wisdom if you want. All right. I guess. All right. So then I'll, I'll kind of just be like, listen, like, have you, he have you heard the whispering on the wind? Have you felt it with your emotions? Uh, Yes. I, I have felt the whispering. All of the colors of the wind have been pointing towards dire days. Uh, she'll We've mobilize... We've painted the colors of the wind more often <laughs> yeah. than not. <laughs> yes. Uh, she'll mobilize the Emerald Enclave. Awesome. Thank you very much. I, I hope that we will not regret this, and I turn to our hippopotamus friend saying that. You... You won't. Um, uh, I I have nothing inspiring to say. <laughs> I just I just want to fight a Tarask, honestly. No, that's fair. That's very fair. <laughs> that's why we're here. We're here to fight dinosaurs. Well, they are quite dinosaurs, anyway. So the next uh, person, as that hippo explains, that they are not quite dinosaurs. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, who chicken? wants to be the next person, chicken? Yeah. Uh, bones. Uh, wait, what? We have two characters going to different groups. Mm -hmm. Bones like can't really talk much on his own, though. <laughs> but <laughs> let's see him try. Uh, bones is twenty. He can. He has a good bevy of of words that he can choose from. Um, and if you want, you could throw on a, a hat of language of comprehend language and just have that as a free item. Alright. And also, <laughs> both of your characters can't make checks for the same person. Oh yeah. So there's no benefit to keeping them together. Maybe sure. I could send... Maybe I could send the knight to Xanathar Guild. And then oh. Bonesaw to the Harpers. Okay. Uh, let's go down to Xanathar Guild. Da, 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 da. Is the knight part of that faction at all? I think Xanathar is evil, so no. Xanathar is a crime yes. lord, uh, a crime lord beholder. Chicken say yes to give you easier checks. Admittedly, yes. <laughs> Bonesaw is objectively an evil I'm character. Thinking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that it's just going there to like intimidate him though. You can do it. It's a it's yeah. a higher trick if you're not in the faction, but like it's not impossible. Uh but yeah, do you take a hippo with you or you just tell them you just try to like scare them into doing stuff. Ultimately I'll, I'll try to take a hippo. Okay. Uh you take one of the forty hippos. Um uh, going through the shady, I believe he lives in the sewers. Uh, you end up talking to to Xanathar. He explains the whole thing, and ultimately, uh, it's a risky plan to have any of the criminal factions help, but they stand to lose just as much as the Onyx folk of this city uh, if the city is turned to ash. So, uh, basically. Um, it's not a matter of he's asking, you know, uh, what's your opinion on this? Um, it's mostly, but it, it's, it's basically that. He just wouldn't ask about it. Yeah, she's really. like, I don't like you. I hate you. <laughs> but I need your help. Uh. But yeah, so I believe we're looking at if you're trying to scare them into doing something. It's some sort of intimidation. Otherwise, it's persuasion. Um, and they can also be bribed, but they're criminals, so it's uh, a high cost. You know, I'd love to see a beholder more, be scared. More towards persuasion, just because mm -hmm. that's what I have expertise in somehow. Sure. Go. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, hmm. That's if that is a failure, I have luck blade luck. If you want to use it, don't use it now. Just because it might end up being lower, actually. That's true. Oh, wait, I rolled a six. Hmm. Well, so you rolled a six before. Imagine if you rolled anything higher than that. You've got, like, a 75% chance, almost. Like, a 70% chance, you know? Uh, and how many people we persuade will affect how many tasks we have to fight at once? It is true. So, this is the rule that's going to affect most of the rest of the game. It's not most of the rest of the game, honestly. It's the first fight, but, you know, the first uh, fight... There's not that many fights. I'll get the luck blade luck back anyway tomorrow. Okay. I'll re-roll it. Twenty-seven. He's terrified at the <laughs> idea of all of the trash ruining his business. He'll mobilize his entire guild of crime things. I don't actually remember. I think they're thieves. He'll do it. Not because he likes you, but because <laughs> this is his city. <laughs> I think he also, like, really loves his goldfish. Like, he is hysterically obsessed with that goldfish in the picture. Yeah, see, um... He he strokes the, the bowl with one of his eyes. 
But yes. Mm. The Harpers, unless somebody else wants to go first. Um, I think the Harpers then. Let's just leave it at that. Like, let's let them go first. Okay. Bones on the Harpers. I like to imagine it's not even a thing where, like, Bonesaw has, like, a good amount of words. It's just, like, the Stephen Hawking thing coming out of the hat. <laughs> oh, no, it's even better. It's even better than that. He's, like, a master of charades, and no one ever misinterprets what his charades are. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect. Harper's basically the same check. A hippo explains what's happening. Yeah, I think the Harper's do, like, help people, right? Yeah, I think that's, um... That's the faction Nick Cage was in in Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. I think for a while he was the Harper. Because they yep. keep getting disbanded. Well, you're talking to that guy. Actually, no, uh, you're not talking to that guy. Who is the Harper's... Um... Let's see. Uh, actually, apparently you don't know who- You know that this person is the leader of the Harpers. Is it not uh, Nick Cage? You don't know that it's not Nick Cage. Out of con- or out of character? Yeah, it's Nick Cage. But he's got a mask on, and he arranges to meet you in a private box at the Lightsinger Theater. It's oh, very hush-hush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to keep quiet, I'll, like, whisper everything and include little charades with it so he understands. Perfect. Uh, give me that persuasion and or intimidation. Or performance. Sure. I don't know how I can intimidate him, but I'll try to persuade. Fourteen. Are you a part of this faction? Yes. God bless. Let me God check. bless that bone saw is a harper. <laughs> that is a, uh, that is almost exactly a passing persuasion check oh. for in the faction. But um, he he nods uh, silently, and you know that you will have the harper's uh, aid on the field. Yes. Next faction. Yep. Take you over the jaw, most of the noise. Okay. And no one's doing so, the Lord's Alliance just... in that case, right? Because then I could go to them as my yeah, paladin. Yeah. Those will probably be on a first name basis with these guys. Then You're gonna be talking to Jar Jarlaxle Benray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have a hippo with me to explain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all have pet hippos well, now, guys. Well, uh, while she's sitting down explaining how so you see this, Vils is just gonna start. Uh, start just like doing tricks with one of his uh, knives out of boredom, getting faster and faster. Now, I'm presuming you're not a member of this faction, but you would be in good standing with this faction, yeah. right? These are people that you've called to aid them before? Yeah, these are people... Basically, anytime we need something done and the local lords are too incompetent to do it with their own men, I call these guys. Which is probably okay. about half the time I need something done. We'll count that as in the faction. Um, it's higher than the legitimate factions, but it's not as high as the... Uh, crime factions, uh, as far as the DC is concerned. Uh, basically, yeah. he would be looking for uh, this, basically a persuasion check and sound reasoning as to how he stands to profit uh, from from this situation. Because presumably you're not paying him. But you can right. pay him. Alright, so... Since we're looking at how he can make a profit, I'm going to use the wisdom and my own knowledge of politics and what happens in the disaster to basically make some suggestions about opportunities that 
often present themselves after these. Like the fact that very few mercenary companies have fought these two asks, the fame of being one of the few that fights them this time will let him drive up his profits. So, just trying to use persuasion with wisdom. Okay, go ahead. God damn it. No, that's enough. Oh, alright. Um, he, he scratches his chin. Okay. We'll, we'll call this an investment. Um, you, uh, you'll have the, the mercenary crew, or company's help. What's As that? usual, it's a ah. pleasure doing business with you. Likewise. But, we, what do we got? Lord's Alliance? Yep. Um, Lord's Alliance would be meeting with, uh, Jalister? Silvermane? I don't want to say Hollister. It wouldn't be an H. Yeah, Jalister. We're... All right. Jalister Silvermane, uh, an earnest man in his mid-20s, um, who has the favor of the, the, the lord of this place. Um, he's, he was in the Yawning Portal when they busted it. He's in the yawning portal still, not the portal, but like at the bar. Yeah, so my tr my paladin wouldn't even have to move really. He could just sit there and be like, "Hey, I need to talk to you." <laughs> it's just the thing where you like spin around in your chair. Hey, you get hey. over here. <laughs> Come over here now. Yeah, I'm talking what? to you. What? What? Listen, uh, this guy has something that he needs to tell you. I'll buy- I'll tell you what, I'll buy you a couple drinks, how's that, if you'll be willing to sit down and listen. He, he points at you. Now you're talking. He- he sits down and listens to the hippo story. Yeah, Are you so, a part of this faction? I would doubt it, honestly. Okay. Um... Give me... We'll go with... Go with advantage because you gave him drinks beforehand. Ooh. Now you're so speaking my language. That's legally a bribe. So, here we are. Um, go ahead and give me a intimidation. Persuade. You know, your, your charismas. One of them. They're the same check, really. I'll tell you sure. right now. That'll do. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you didn't need the advantage. No, but, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, granted, uh, he, it was eight more. He looks terrified. Uh, he slams the table um, and s says that you'll have the, the aid of the Lord's Alliance and storms off to go make sure that that is true. Excellent. Thank you very much. I believe we have the Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, and Zentarim, and a couple more crime families, and a dragon. <laughs> Shit, who wants to deal with the dragon? <laughs> Good shit would like to deal with the dragon, specifically so you can ride it and jump off its back onto the back of its desk. But what if, I, me... what if I told you I could turn myself into a dragon as a druid? I've got the spell to <laughs> shape change, you can ride that's, me. That's something for later, but as a, a quick thing, Give me um a, a, a D twenty. Who all of just us or a, just him? Just him. Just a random D twenty. Cause you guys didn't do <laughs> This dragon does not uh, like you. It will help if you with a, a certain check, but it's a higher check, but he does not like you. I like it as since she was talking. He's walking on like examining the dragon's loot out of boredom, and he keeps breaking things, just squeezing them too hard. <laughs> he picks up like a ruby and squeezes it too hard. <laughs> yes. Here's a picture of the dragon. Uh, as you can tell, he already has a lot of gold, and theoretically on all of these factions you could bribe them. He's the most expensive to bribe. 
What's his cost to grind? Uh, 50,000. Wow. Yeah, we don't have that much. The crime guilds are, uh, admittedly, the gold ahead of time is so you guys could theoretically bribe one or two people. Hmm. Maybe not the dragon, though. What if we bribed him with a dragon mask? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm not giving that up. I'm sorry, guys. I was like, well, when you put it like that, that suddenly meets the price. <laughs> um, but I'm also not there uh, to bribe him, so uh, I can't really help. I don't know if all of you, between each other, have that much gold. No. The crime factions, I think, are twenty-five thousand. The mercenary is twenty-five thousand. And all of the legitimate factions are 10,000 to bribe. But it's an yes. in all else fails. Yes, just thinking just to get the king to pay for the hippos to be on our side. Mm -hmm. Being used to having to clean up the, his king's messes, he could approach the king of this place, apologize for just behavior, and Basically, offer to pay the. Well, the people sounded like half up front to stay in the city. We also offer to pay that up front to have now, on the condition that he gets reimbursed if the tasks actually do come and they need the hippos. Uh, persuasion, it's a low check. So. Much better. Okay. But understand that you are not being paid back if the giraffes do not come. I understand. Well, this is that whole like foreshadowing of like the president in like a some sort of like war movie being like, that'll never happen. The aliens won't get here. But also like what if they didn't? <laughs> Uh, you guys did a, a whole bunch of bribing and then they never showed up and that's the end. We're done. I mean, honestly, that would be the real good way to end this campaign now, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, hey. hey, the king has a kingdom. I sent him 5,000 gold he has on his post and this is a pocket change. It's, it's the city of Splendors. They have plenty of gold going around. It's just that you don't get to have that much gold if you pay the first person who says something, right? Yeah. Um, so having, basically, since he has no risk um, in you paying it, it's fine. Sure. Okay, we'll pay afterward if this actually is a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the king's... Uh, king's pushing having spending money. Is he just takes a, put, uh, a bag of pudding into the treasury and scoops up a bunch and then uses that until it runs out. Perfect. Those make sure the king, there isn't enough in the ch treasury for the king to make the kingdom go broke. <laughs> okay, uh, any more factions do we want to hit up? Um... I just went all my gold. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be kind of tough thinking about the other factions because we've got the noble families, the Zentarum, which are literally the crime lords of Waterdeep, and actually that, the entire uh, Sword Coast. Lantern noble family is a, a mafia. Ah, so we got the mafia too. Yeah, That's you know. That's why they're in criminal factions. Mm. I kind of want those to go intimidate other criminals. <laughs> You gotta get yourself a nice, like, black suit, though, and, like, some roses and a cat as well. Actually, wait, you are the cat! Uh, how long do we have before the task get heal? Um, they don't know when, but it they said today. So, they aren't sure when today. I wonder if I want to just use up key points and basically hope I have time for a short desk. If you have time for a short rest, it is, it's cutting it. 
Uh, because you guys are, are going around the city to, to talk to these people. Except uh. for the Lord's Alliance, who was already in the bar. Yeah. Right. I'll just try to intimidate one of the criminal factions without being my full astral self then. Mm, okay. Uh, do you want to do the noble family? Uh, Manchun Zenderim? The Shard Shunders? Those are the three that aren't, aren't Xanathar. Probably the noble family. Okay. Um, so, presumably you're not a member of the faction. No. no. Uh, so DC's higher, but go ahead and make that uh, check. You can okay. instead do a deception if you want to pretend to be a member of that faction. <laughs> or if you want to this promise man. something that you cannot give the faction, such as like amnesty for past crimes. Unfortunately... I don't know how to use wisdom in deception or use dexterity in deception. It is hard. So, well, you could try to. I mean, that would be sleight of hand in that case, actually. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, there's no real way to deceive <laughs> someone with dexterity. Imagine trying to deceive someone with constitution, though. Like, you're just trying Maybe to hide like, the fact you're poisoned. I could see you using deception, dexterity, if you were, like, trying to convince somebody that you were two people behind, <laughs> like,. <laughs> behind like a, a wall or something and maybe you're either just running real fast or you're just real bendy and they're like aha an arm over here it was me <laughs> instead i'm going to try to intimidate using decks you see like playing with my knives as the hippos telling their story mm -hmm. and saying so you now know the situation I know that uh, the castle enters are statistically human nobles, but I'm not going to look it up, and I'm going to say it's a tabaxi petting a monkey. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so, as I'm talking about this, I like twirling or flourishing one of my knives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and part of my flourish could easily be turned into just throwing it at them. Mm -hmm. I'm being very obvious about that. Then I'll say, so, you know the situation. And I know about all the underhanded shit your family does. Are you going to redeem yourself and hit the, and help this city? Or does the city no longer have any use for you? Go ahead and make the check. That's a crit fail Is that a what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> bless. That's like my third crit fail. God uh, bless. Well, I mean, you get them all out at the beginning, right? <laughs> no, he's going to have time. more from the looks of it. Uh, uh, this I will relish in the fact that he has more. They, this of Valor sucks at rolling, apparently. They, uh, they aren't uh, into helping, but they thank you for the information. And they're just gonna clear out of the fucking city. They'll come back. <laughs> they totally believe you, they won't help you. Alright. Uh, you can pay them 25000 if that's a thing. Otherwise, they are just going to clear out of here. As they say that, I take out a small black book and ask him how he spells his name. I don't leave after I write it down. Oh, no. Don't tell me uh, that's the death note. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, tell me that's not your well, legendary item. <laughs> Actually, please no, tell me name, it is. The names in the book will die eventually. <laughs> the, uh... The, what I'm going to call tabaxi nobles uh, scatter out of the city. Just well-dressed cats scattering. The Aristocats? The Aristocats. <laughs> um, any more factions that we want to hit? I'm if not, we can proceed. Uh, not a lot. I think uh, two or three of your characters can hit one more faction because they didn't go see the king. Uh, I'd say maybe... The, uh, I'll go to the Zentarum as, uh, okay. I'll go to the Zentarum as my paladin. The Zentarum, uh, Davil Starsong, uh, keeps a room at the Yawning Portal, so again, you don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, he doesn't he need does to go of, anywhere. He does all of his business in the establishment's tap room. He's actually uh, trying to find factions, he's just getting drunk and keeps sending into them. Yes. Yeah, uh, you meet Devil Starsong, who is a little bit drunk. Um, he's playing a, an elven lute. 
uh, very delicately. It's lovely. That's uh, that's some mighty fine uh, artistry you got there. Thank you. Uh, but so tell me, um, how would you feel uh, if you weren't able to continue that? And I I introduce my uh, my hippopotamus friend. He's probably gonna give him the same spiel. <laughs> the hippo uh, uh, info dumps, um, and uh, you know those like those music memes where they're just playing a piano to what they're saying. Tooting on flute stops. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh wait, uh, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, like the the freaking. Sorry, I had a different idea right in my head, and that's why I said that. But yeah, I know what the, you mean. The uh, the the Cardi B stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, he does that the whole time, but he is listening. You could tell he's listening. Uh, uh but give me that, uh, cool time check. All right. Uh, I'm just going to hope this is work. This is going to work. Wow. Wow. That's a three. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. It's a this legitimate... Great, guys. It, it's it bodes well. Um, mm, he's not into it. Uh, he could ready some people for that low low cost of ten thousand, but um, mm. hey, you not, have out of any of this. Not into it. Yeah, you know something. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the druid potentially doesn't carry all of his money. Sure. <laughs> um, and so, uh, my character here, my paladin, has potentially also the ability to carry the other guy's money, so he's gonna pay the full 10,000. Okay, cool! You have the, the service of the Zentarim. Um, I'm gonna be real, past this, all of the other factions are just extra. Um, you've hit the maximum amount of points, it's seven or greater ally points um so uh after uh, uh going to all the factions you can uh everybody meets back at the castle ward several of the factions are there uh, the the people you have gathered the cats have scattered uh the the guard or guards have been uh increased um Let's see. Suddenly, a magical hum surrounds the area, or, or surround, or sounds throughout the area as a circular portal with a thirty-foot radius opens up in the middle of Rainrum Street. Massive creatures make the portal look like a cramped doorway as they exit through the swirling energy and stomp out onto the street. Uh, each is reptilian in, in appearance, with a massive maw of sharp teeth, a horned head clawed hands and a carapace covering its back. The monstrosity uh, gives a hungry roar as they tear through the buildings nearby and cries of alarm fill the streets. There's more than one terrasse coming out of this, uh, but you guys have enough factions that they basically pick a terrasque as they scatter out of this portal. Uh, and you guys are going to be fighting one terrasque. Yay. Excellent. You guys did it. We did. Let me drag you guys to a map that is for sure not the correct map, but the map was tiny, um, and this is all I could do, okay? Wow, this is a tiny map. Here we go. Yes. Between the size of OFID, it could be. Yeah. Well, it's five by five or greater, right? Like uh, being. I put you guys on the map. You can put yourselves accordingly. Oh, I see. Yeah, we're all like we're all like yeah. really small towards the center. How did I not notice you drew with his name Lupus into the map? Because I only uh, just renamed the token. Name your druid Lupus. Why wouldn't I name my druid Lupus? Oh God, no! I see the map now. It took a minute to load. <laughs> the big map. Oh. Yeah, it uh, just load up for you guys. Area suddenly. that I put you guys in is where they're going to be coming from. Is anybody else oh. as close 
The game oh. just cr the game just fucking crashed for me, and I gotta go back into it. I can cut I... this map in half if necessary. No, I like I I think I actually put the back button. Okay. What were you saying, Nick? Nick so one. I, I just need to load because it was saying my, the game thought my cursor was a few inches off from where it was. Mm. This map.